Hey, hello everybody, I'm a balance, and today I'm standing outside of my grand company's headquarters because today we're going to be talking about all of what you can get with your grand company seals. And unlike a usual guide, which will just tell you to buy a certain thing and not explain why or why not to buy a certain things, I'm going to explain basically every single item that you can get with grand company seals and also some other things that you could do with them so that you are more well informed on what exactly these do and you can spend them accordingly. As you go through the game, especially early on, you're going to be getting grand company seals for your participation in the game essentially. And you could take these grand company seals and buy a number of things, but they do have a cap to them. So you'll want to make sure that you spend them before they overcap, because if they overcap, well, then you're just wasting a currency, essentially. So the Serpent Quartermaster is where you can buy most things with these seals. And, and generally, this NPC can be a whole heck overwhelming because you have many different pages based on the ranks in the Grand Company, as well as different tabs for weapons, armors, material, and materials, which are two different tabs. But generally, the first two tabs, the weapons and armor, are pretty self-explanatory. Now, while the gears have a primary use probably for glamours now, they do have some pretty notable stats at the levels they're equipable at. Something to note is that these sets actually have set bonuses, and these can pull them ahead in terms of stats for gear of that level. Obviously, the game has sped up to a degree that your gear at level 30 isn't really going to matter all that much anymore. There is actually a good use for the Serpent, uh, Serpent Private's Cough, for example, where it'll actually give you more perception and gathering, which is a really good item to purchase if you're looking to getting into gathering. Because otherwise, the gathering gear can be quite expensive because Everyone's trying to gouge everybody. Everybody is trying to burn that ladder getting into crafting because crafting can be very profitable. And the more crafters there are, the less money is in the craft. And this goes on to the Serpent Carriers and the Serpent Bringers Ring, which also have a set bonus so it improves your crafting and gathering stats. So these are definitely things that you should consider if you're a high ranking member in your grand company and you're looking to venture into crafting or gathering. These are definitely some items that you'll want to look into purchasing. But let's quickly go through the list. And now that we've kind of discussed weapons and armor, let's go through the list talking mainly about the material and the materials. And I'll explain exactly what all of these items do so that you can make informed decisions with your grand company seals. So the first item of course, is going to be a venture. Ventures are used essentially to command your retainers around. Retainers are an optional feature where you get basically a servant. They can go on adventures or explorations, or they can hunt you specific items. But generally to do this is going to cost you ventures. So this isn't the only place to get ventures. It's probably the cheapest and most accessible way to get ventures. Next, of course, we have a antidote, which is going to cure poison. This is kind of an old item that doesn't really have any real use anymore. Generally, if you're affected by a status, uh, it's clearable very easily from the white mage or healer that you have. All healers have a, an ability to cure statuses and this isn't really a useful item anymore. Same with the Echo Drops, this cures silence, but has basically been power crept out of relevancy. Now, we have the Grade 1, 2, and 3 Dark Matters. Dark Matters are items used to repair gear. When you get a certain level of crafter, you'll actually get the ability to repair your own gear. You can see that my gear here is a little damaged, and I can go ahead and right click and repair. And this is going to cost me dark matter based on the level of the gear. Since I'm using level 90 gear, it's going to take grade 8 dark matter to repair it. Now, grade 8 dark matter will actually work retroactively for all gear. So if I wanted to repair a level 10 gear, I could do that with grade 8 dark matter, but that would kind of be a waste because grade 8 dark matter is a bit more expensive. But for convenience sake, you just have a bunch of the latest dark matter and just use that to repair everything because the price difference isn't really that big of a deal and the amount of times that you'll have to repair something that's really low level doesn't come up very often. 
And you see here, all of my gear has been repaired and it only cost me a few dark matters. And this is probably going to be cheaper than going to a Mender NPC. And also it has the benefit that a player repaired gear can actually go over 100% condition. So you can see that my bracelets here are actually at 144%. When you repair something with dark matter, it just adds 100% to its current condition. And this actually gives you more time uh, with the gear before it ends up breaking. And it also allows you to repair in the middle of a raid, which is honestly a really cool thing. They're going to expand this and let crafters repair gear of their party members soon, but that's not a feature yet, but it definitely is a cool thing that you can do. So if you want to help out your crafter friends, you could buy them some dark matter. I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Now the next things, we have the Athic Lavender Seeds and the Void Drake Seeds. These are used for gardening, and gardening is a exclusive feature to homeowners. Essentially, each kind of house can have a little garden on it, and you can use these seeds, plant them in the ground. Now depending on what kind of seed it is and how you've managed the plant, days or hours later you'll have yourself a plant which you can use for other recipes. As for what exactly these plants do once they're grown, there is an NPC in the housing district, whatever housing district you happen to be in, called the Material Supplier, and they have an option called Curious Crop Exchange. And these will give you items in exchange for the Ithic Lavender and the Void Drake plants that you end up growing. A lot of these items are used for other Grand Company items, like Dark Steel Ore is really, really valuable. So the fact that you can get Dark Steel Ore via Void Drake means that probably buying, buying Void Drake seeds is a really good idea. All right, next up, we've got two status recovery items with the Smelling Salts and the Spine Drops. This cures sleeping and paralysis accordingly, but again, this has been basically just pushed out of relevancy because generally the design now is that, hey, if there's a status, either you probably shouldn't have got it to begin with, and if you got it, then you could probably have it cured. If not, then you just kind of have to suffer. The next two items are engineering and survival manuals. These will actually massively increase the amount of experience that you get for either gathering or crafting. Engineering is your crafting one and survival is your gathering one. So if you're leveling up your crafters or your gatherers, definitely pick up some of these. They only work up to a certain level and then after that they'll be basically half as effective. So these ones will work up to level 40. And after they give you the 250,000 experience points, they will wear off. So you might want to buy quite a few of these when you're leveling up your crafters and gatherers. Next we have some grade four and five dark matter. These are basically identical to the grade one, two, and three. However, their levels are expanded. So a grade four dark matter will work up to level 40. Grade five dark matter works up to level 50. Next, we have the Swan Feather, which is exclusively used to craft three different kinds of hats. First, we have the Surge Hat of Aiming, which is a level 66 aiming variety of headgear. And I'd love to show you what it looks like, but unfortunately, I'm playing Viera, so hats like this don't exist on my character. I'll maybe try to find a picture of someone else wearing it. And we also have the Surge Hat of Casting, which is equivalent, but for casters. And we have the... Surge Hat of Healing, which is a different hat for healers, obviously. And all of these are dyeable. I don't know which part would be different depending on which variety of hat you get, but that is pretty much all the swan feathers are used for. And the next one is the eagle feather. Now, if we look at recipes using the eagle feather, you can see that the eagle feather actually goes into a level 66 helmet for dragoons and reapers. It also makes certain headgears such as the true griffin hat of aiming and casting. And it also makes a new world headdress, which is a glamour item, which you can generally get the other pieces from treasure hunt so these items will be quite valuable because it is very rare for people to go on treasure hunts generally the demand for these items is usually higher than the supply but in this case it might be a little bit too old for a huge influx of money to 
for for getting these the main purpose of the eagle feathers is actually going to be making the blessed fletchlings which then go into making this spelling arrow which can then be used along with unidentifiable ore to buy divine water from Christiana in Mordana. And these items are mainly used in the quests and upgrading of your anima relic weapons. For those of you who don't know what a relic weapon is, it's essentially a very rare weapon that you upgrade over time as patches come out and essentially is a really, really strong weapon, generally becomes the strongest weapon of a certain type but is usually surpassed by the next expansion. And the interesting thing about these weapons is that you can basically upgrade them as you go through the game, and you will actually be able to define which stats are on them at the end of it all. Now, the last item in the first tier for materials is going to be the Pudding Flesh. Now, these also drop from monsters, and I do believe that you can send your retainer out to get them too. But Pudding Flesh is mainly used for different kinds of potions. You have a Mega Potion of Vitality or an X Potion of Mind. These are generally really old items that don't really have any relevance anymore. But there's also some furniture items such as the Pudding Desk or Pudding Floor Lamp. But generally, since this also drops from another item and retainers can also find it, it's generally not a good idea to be spending your Grand Company Seals for Pudding Flesh. So next up, we have the items for the Sergeant 3rd Class, 2nd Class, 1st Class, and the Chief Sergeant of your Grand Company. And you'll also get a whole new list of weapons and armor to choose from. And essentially, these will allow you to dress up as the higher ranks in your Grand Company so that you can kind of showcase just how high you've got your Grand Company by putting on the armor. Although most of these armors are horrendously out of date, you're definitely not going to be using them for any kind of serious content but they do have some really neat stats if you are looking to level your crafters or gatherers so something like the sergeant's apron is a really good option for crafting when you're first starting out because like i said before getting into crafting is a whole lot harder than actually being a crafter but we're mostly interested in the material and the materials. Now there are no materials for this tier, so we're just going to be focusing on the material. Now the next item, or the first item that we need to be talking about with the, the mid-tier material items is the Kiss of the Morning Meadow. This is actually a different item depending on which Grand Company you've chosen. Because I am the Twin Adler Grand Company, I'm gonna get Kiss of the Morning Meadow, which is an MP restorative item. If you're in the Maelstrom Grand Company, you'll get something called a Duskin Draught which heals HP instead. And if you're in the Immortal Flames Grand Company, you'll get something called Onyx Tears, which actually recovers both HP and MP, but a little bit less of each. Overall, using items to heal the player is generally a, a relic of the past that really isn't necessary anymore. The only times that you'd really want to do that is if you're doing some triple flare memes on Black Mage, but overall just isn't really worth it. Uh, and in that, in that sense, there is MP items that have less cooldown and heal more. So generally, this is not a great item to pick for your Grand Company seals, and it's quite expensive at 2.8k. Next we have two chocobo bardings which is going to be basically item that you can use to dress up your chocobo and essentially this is going to represent which grand company you've chosen. So if you're in the twin adler grand company you're going to get a yellow barding. Immortal flames is probably going to be a black barding and the maelstrom is probably going to be red. Next up, we have a new engineering and survival manual. This is the revised version. This one will go up to level 50 and offers twice as much EXP in total. So instead of 250,000 EXP, you'll have 500,000 EXP. If you have this rank, I think it's a good idea to get this because if you look at the manuals, right, the engineering manual is 1.4 for 250,000 experience, but you could instead spend 2.3 to get double the amount of experience. So if you are this level, even if you're not between the levels of 40 and 50 on your crafters and gatherers, it might be a good idea to get the improved version of the manual just because it's more EXP per Grand Company seal. Next we have a cordial, and this is actually quite a good item. A cordial is an item that's going to recover your gathering points. If you're playing a gatherer, you have a certain amount of points that you can use to use 
use your gatherer skills, and this can essentially allow you to get more items from a certain node or extend the life of a certain gathering node. And cordials are really, really good because they, they allow you to recover a massive amount of GP in one felt swoop. GP does recover naturally over time, but if you're trying to gather a bunch of timed nodes in a quick succession, then cordial or later on high cordial is a great item to use to kind of circumvent the massive amount of GP that you're using to get those timed nodes. Next up, we have a Spirit Bond Potion, and this is going to increase your Spirit Bond gain. Essentially, whenever you're using an item in Final Fantasy XIV, it slowly gains Spirit Bond over time. And when its Spirit Bond maxes out, you'll be able to extract Materia from it. And the uh, kind of Materia and the level of Materia you get are based on the level of the gear and what kind of gear it is. So you're more likely to get crit and direct hit Materia if it has a lot of crit and direct hit on the weapon already or on the item. And and essentially, this will just increase the speed in which you get Spirit Bond, which can be really good if you're short of materia and you need to get a whole lot more. This is something you could quickly throw onto yourself and do a big gaming session and get a bunch of Spirit Bond on your gear in order to get a bunch more materia. Next, we have the Durability Draw, which reduces the amount of durability that you lose on your gear over time. Basically expands the time that you have between repairs on your gear. Now, the next two items are very, very important. Glamour Dispeller and Glamour Prism. These are the main items that you use to save and dispel glamours from items. Essentially what a glamour is, is basically an item taking on the appearance of another one. If you cast glamour on an item, you can change its appearance. So I can make my Augmented Radiance Helm of Maiming look like a Harvester Blinder if I wanted to. And this would allow me to keep the stats of the high-end item while still looking cute as hell, as you could see. This is essentially the system in which you can stylize your character in a way that you want. And both of these items are super important for both putting glamours on items and then also taking them off if you're done with them looking a certain way. So both of these items are really good and you should probably buy a bunch of them because you're going to need a bunch of them. And the next item we want to talk about is the Sanction, which seems to be a weird, mysterious little item uh, that says it temporarily enhances the properties of company-issued armor. And if we go over to the armor section in this tier, if you look at something like the Serpent Sergeant's Hoplon, we can see that if you're using a Sanction, you're also going to get plus six tenacity. And the same for the Targe with crit instead. So it's a pretty neat effect, but overall this is for gear that's really old and long forgotten, so probably not a great use of your valuable seals. Next, of course, we have the Gridanian Chested Barding, and of this is going to be another barding for your Chocobo, but it's going to represent whichever grand company that you assign to. So if you like yellow, Twin Adler. If you like black, Immortal Flames. If you like red, Maelstrom. And then we have some furniture items with the uh, Serpent Ceiling Fan, Serpent Armor, Serpent Storage Bands, the Utility Cot, the Desk, the Strong Box, the Map, the, the Banner, and uh, like I said before, these items are going to change depending on which grand company you have. And I think that about does it for what's accessible with the Petty Officer and Soldier ranks. And if you want to get further in your Grand Company, you're going to have to interact with the Squadron content. Which essentially this back room here, you go here and you have a Squadron which can do things for you. And actually, this unplanned, I got a successful mission here. And this was my weekly mission, so... We did the imposter alert, sus, and we were able to get a success, which is going to give me priority Aetherite passes, which is another thing that you can do with your Grand Company seals. So squadron missions are essentially you get a bunch of NPCs that apply to be part of your squadron and you level them up gradually to the point where they can take on the third tier missions where you can start to get items from them. So for example, you'll have Priority Seal Allowance, which increases the amount of seals that you get for doing certain duties. Additionally, you can also get Gold Saucer VIP cards, which will increase your MGP bonus. Essentially, a lot of these items will function as Grade 3 of your 
free company buff. So free companies have actions which they can activate and there's three tiers of each. Now the third tier is generally locked behind ethereal wheels which requires your free company to go through expeditions which can be a whole thing and it generally is a lot of work. We're working on getting to that point in the meme team grand company but we're not quite there yet. So this is a good way to personalize those buffs if you just want them for yourself and you don't want to have to wait for your free company to pick up the slack but with that said the but with that said the squadron content is generally how you're going to get further in your grand company and if you want to become a captain and get a grand company seal of ninety thousand, you will have to interact with the squadron content pog it's link i guess that would be linkle well no linkle would be an archer that's just link the female what if zelda was a girl <laughs> and finally we have the items that are reserved for the or the second lieutenant which you will be able to access without doing too much squadron stuff the first lieutenant which you will need to do some squadron stuff and the captain of whatever grand company you've assigned to this offers some unique items as well as something something i should note here there are unique weapons at the captain rank which are basically exclusive to captains and the kind of weapons that you'll get are dependent on your grand company so i really hope they don't put scythes in here because if they do then i'm going to have to figure out how to switch grand companies to get all three of the different scythes and you also have some armor that is unique to the higher rankings of the grand company and we have a whole bunch of new material and then do materials to talk about and there's actually quite a lot here to buy so let's go through it and see what we can spend our grand company seals on and to start things off in our materials we have some more dark matter but there is something to note here because grade six dark matter actually has a second purpose grade six dark matter actually is used to create magitech repair materials which are used to repair the airships and submersibles that free companies can make to go on expeditions which in turn gets them a whole lot of unique items that are used to upgrade their houses or their ability to apply buffs to themselves via the free company actions. So if you want to partake in that content, you're going to have to get some grade six specifically dark matter and buying it with grand company seals is a great way to save some money. Next, we have a lot of food here. We have trapper's quiche, fish soup, hot chocolate, mar on glace, Kaiser roll, moral salad, cockatice meatballs, sesame cookie, and king cake. Now, all of these items have one thing in common. They're super, super old. And any kind of like high-end investment at this level of the game is pretty much not worth it. But if it makes the difference between you being able to craft something or not, then you might want to go ahead and grab some because while you're leveling up your crafters, obviously you're going to have a hard time getting stats. And if the extra crafting points put you over the edge, then you go ahead and get yourself some fish soup. It's relatively cheap at 500. And the one outlier here is going to be the king cake at 5,000 seals a piece. The king cake is actually used along with unidentifiable seeds to purchase fast acting elegant catalyst. And this of course is an item that's used in the anima relic weapon quest line. So if you're looking into getting those relic weapons, you're going to have to purchase some of this king cake. Next we have the titanium alloy mirror, which is also used in the anima relic weapon quest line. The Admin Tite Francesca is also an item that's used for the Anima Relic Weapon quest line. And once again, we see those dispelling arrows. So if you don't want to craft them with the lesser materials, you can just buy them outright once you're at a certain rank. Next, we have the Bombard Core, which is quite expensive at 20,000 seals each. And this is actually going to be used for the Zodiac Relic Weapons. 
And next we go over to Talon to showcase what exactly the Moonstones do. The Moonstones are the next item. And Talon is a crafting and gathering NPC. And he actually is very interested in Moonstones and can actually give you certain things for them. So one of the main things that you could buy with Moonstones is the Better Crowned Pie, which is a gathering and control item that also increases spirit bond gain. Again, kind of a, a decent item if it wasn't such a low level item at the same time. And Moonstones can be used along with Talon Seal of Mining Mastery to upgrade a certain mining specific tool. So you can see the item level 75 Mammon Supra can be upgraded to the item level 90 Manum Lucas with Moonstones. Next we have the Bamboo Paper, which is also a Talon specific item and the Magic Oil Cloth, which again is also a Talon specific item. So if you're looking to get those very specific uh, mining or fishing or botanist tools, then these are the items that you're going to have to get access to. And the Glacier Crystal is also one of those items. Now the Regan Pepper is a very interesting item. It's going to cost quite a bit at 48,000 seals, but it's going to reset all of the skill points of your Chocobo Companion. If you go into our Companion here, you can see that I've spent all of my skill points on healing. So if I wanted to reset that and get a defending or a tank Chocobo or maybe a more attack focused Chocobo, I could spend the money on the Regan Pepper and reset the skill points of my horse. Next is a hatchling minion based on which grand company you have. So I have the serpent hatchling here. If you're on the maelstrom, you'll have the storm hatchling and the immortal flames will probably have the flame hatchling. And essentially it's just a small little baby chocobo wearing a headgear associated with the grand company which you've selected. We also have an interior wall and flooring that matches whichever grand company that you've applied to. And the next item is pretty important with a miniature aetherite. Now a miniature aetherite is a outdoor furnishing that you can place on your lawn, on the lawn of your housing estate. And basically what this does is allows you to teleport right to your estate hall. So you can see that my free company has a miniature aetherite on the lawn, which means I can teleport immediately to it as long as I'm in that free company. And next we have the Elder Seedster portrait, and this is going to change depending on your grand company. This is basically just a picture of a high ranking grand company figure, and depending on which grand company you've applied to, you're going to have a different picture, obviously. Next we have some etiquette items, and these essentially unlock emotes for your character. We have the Battlefield Etiquette Attention, the Battlefield Etiquette At Ease, and the Ballroom Etiquette Reflection. Now, if we go into our squadron area, we can see our Serpent Sergeant here doing the at ease pose, and I can actually go up next to him and do the attention pose, and you can see the difference between the two poses. Additionally, Reflect is not an emote, but rather an expression, and it just allows you to reflect on your time with a certain object or person. Next up, we got the Twin Adler Aetherite Ticket, which is going to be an Aetherite Ticket that will teleport you right in front of your Grand Company NPC. So this will actually teleport you just right over here. Obviously, depending on which Grand Company you're assigned to, it's going to teleport you somewhere else. So it's basically a very easy warp right to your grand company. Whether or not it's worth 2,000 seals, I think is a little bit much. Uh, it's considering that the Aetherite is just like right there. It's like a 20 second walk to go to the Adler's Nest. It might be different depending on which grand company you have, but for us new Gridanians, it's not that big of a deal. And I don't know if it's worth 2,000 seals every time you want to come here because it is a consumable item and you will use it every time. Next up, we have a high grade company issued tonic, and this is exclusively used for command missions, which you can go on with your grand company. This will essentially function as a phoenix down. If you just so happen to lose your healer, you don't have to sacrifice the run. You can just res them with the high grade company issued tonic. However, it's honestly really not necessary. The characters or the squadron members that you go with when you go on a command mission are horrendously overpowered because they haven't been subject to the number crunch that came with us when entering Endwalker. 
They also are able to use skills seemingly without any cooldown or any rhyme or reason. So even if you are subjecting your tank to some of the worst abuse, they will just keep spamming their immunity skill and essentially not be able to die. Also, since they're not subject to the number crunch, they will have significantly more HP, attack, and defense than you do. So if anyone is going to die first, it's probably going to be you. Next, we have the Contemporary Warfare items, Defense, Offense, and Magic. This essentially allows you to change the jobs of your squadron members. So if you wanted to change someone to a Gladiator or Marauder, then you'd use a Defense book. And if you wanted to change them to one of the DPS rolls, then you could use an Offense book. And one of the Magic rolls, you could go ahead and use the Magic's book. And we have the Squadron Enlistment Manual, which essentially will bring a new recruit to your squadron. So, so while you're doing Squadron, occasionally a new recruit will come in. This essentially forces a new recruit to come in. So if you're looking to model your squadron in a certain way, I know some people like to make it like all Lalafels, for example, because, you know, it's funny, he <laughs> You can go ahead and do that, and this will help you do it. You just have to invest some Grand Company seals and get your squadron all set up. Now, the next two items are quite interesting. We have the Material Container 3.0 and the Material Container 4.0. These are loot boxes. These contain basically a random mount or minion introduced in a certain group of content. So you can see that the 3.0 contains all minions and mounts introduced in A Realm Reborn or Heaven's Ward, and the 4.0 contains minions and mounts that were introduced in Stormblood. I will note that there are some really rare items in here, and if you're lucky, you can get yourself a lot of money by opening loot boxes, but they are expensive at 20,000 seals each, so it's not a thing to be taken lightly, and essentially, it's just something to spend once you've already spent on everything else. If you have nothing else to do, go ahead and try to open yourself with some material containers. If you get lucky and get a dark unicorn, well, that's a huge amount of money on the market board. Or if you're going with a 4.0, any one of the Eureka mounts is honestly going to be worth the investment anyway because Eureka is super grindy and if you're going to do that manually, it's going to take you a really long time. And we're going to start off with Numite, which as you might have guessed is an ingredient used to sharpen your Anima Relic weapons. Next on the list we have Glass Fiber, which can be used to make both Luminous Fiber which, if you look even deeper, is used to make of the round style weapons. Uh, and this does include a sickle of the round, which I'm actually wearing. The difference between the weapons that the boss drops and the ones that you craft is that when you pull these out, they actually have a special effect. As you can see with the glow here on my scythe. Glass fiber can also be made into tempered glass, which is used to make stuff like the tier 3 and 4 aquarium, as well as many other furnishing items. So essentially, instead of making weapons, you've got yourself some furniture to make instead. Next we have the quick hardening sealant, which is mainly used to craft some level 50 master recipe level crafting and gathering tools. And then next up we have the Quick Hardening Sealant, which is an item that's mainly used to craft some level 50 masterwork gear that's mainly used for crafting and gathering. I will note that a lot of this stuff is all classes, so while it does give gathering and crafting stats, it is an all class item, so it can be used to glamour and used on basically any class you want. So if you wanted, for example, this apron with the little baby chocobos on it, you could go ahead and make that and use that on whatever class you'd like. Next, we have the smoked bacon, which is used for a variety of culinary recipes, including the bacon broth and the bacon bread, as well as some level 60 recipes with the heaven egg soup, spaghetti carbonara, and the log tan cordon bleu. These are old school recipes that obviously you're not going to be making too much of anymore, but it's just good to know where stuff is going. 
Next, we have roasted coffee beans, which at one point was probably used to make triple cream coffee. Although, considering the stats on this particular food, I don't imagine a lot of people were too thrilled about it. So you're probably going to use it to craft the High House Supper Set, which is a furniture item that, while it does grant you stat bonuses if you eat it, the main appeal of it is just to kind of place it on a table to make your house look a little better. Next up, we have the Woot's Ore, which can be crafted into Woot's Ingot. And the Woots Ingot can be used to make a many variety of things, mainly some level 50 masterwork weapons, but also some minions, such as the model Magitech bit, and some furniture items like the Head of the Dreadworm. And most notably, they are a material for the replica Allegan pieces of equipment, which are very commonly used as glamour items. Next, we have the Arachna Web, which is used to create a very cute Nana Bear minion, as well as Arcane Velveteen and Star Velvet. Arcane Velveteen can be used to craft many things, such as the replica Allegan and Dreadworm pieces that are very commonly sought after for glamour. And turning them into Star Velvet instead gives you a lot of level 60 masterwork recipes that you may or may not be using for glamour at this point or also some furniture items such as the trouser hanger. Next up we have Razik Sap, which is another crafting ingredient that goes into making platinum ingots. Now platinum ingots have a whole load of recipes associated with them, including the replica Allegan pieces as well as certain items of the round and the nightly round table furniture item. So there's plenty of things to do with platinum ingots, and therefore plenty to do with Razik Sap. But it mostly seems to be a glamour-specific thing, so it's not anything someone's going to be pursuing for content progression. And Dobbin will be used to make either Kiramu leather or Hirakron leather, and Kiramu has its own crafting branch, which includes a lot of level 50 and level 60 masterwork items. And there's potentially a lot of glamour pieces that you will need this item to get access to. Going the opposite way with Hemicryon leather, you've got yourself some barding, as well as a lot of Hemiskin equipment that are also level 60 masterwork as well. And next up we have the Borax, which is used to make ebony lumber, treated carpor wood lumber, and teak lumber. And all of these are masterwork recipes, as well as flint caviar which is a masterwork level 50 culinarian recipe, but obviously the lumbers are going to branch into their own crafting trees and make things such as furniture, wood is really popular for furniture items obviously, as well as some of the replica Allegan stuff, and much is the same for the other lumbers too where the level 60 lumbers actually go towards making some of the level 60 boss crafted weapons, as I showed before with the of the round set. And finally for Borax, we have teak lumber, which is used to make the tier four aquarium, probably most importantly, as well as a lot of teak based items. And most of these items are level 60 masterwork crafted gear. So at one point there were probably bis, but obviously not anymore. Next we have the canard breast, which is used to make two different culinarian masterwork recipes for level 50. The duck broth is a talon based item, so this is something that talon will have you craft in order to get some of those high tier crafting style items. So if you want a really fancy frying pan from Talon, you'll have to make the duck broth, as well as the roast canard, which at probably one point was a decent food, but obviously not so much anymore. Next up we have the Dalaman Popito, which is a, another food style recipe that's used to make two level 50 masterwork recipes, as well as a regular level 60 recipe as well. And the Royal Kukuru Bean is going to make a tabletop item, which is going to be edible, but is mainly going to probably just be used for aesthetics in the Valentine's Cake. And we also have two masterwork recipes, one at level 50, and oddly enough, another one at level 80. And we have another food item at the Star Ansi, and this is going to make two level 50 masterwork recipes and a level 60 masterwork recipe. Obviously, all of these foods are long gone and forgotten, but it's good to know where all of this stuff is used.
And next up, we have uh, some really interesting items, starting with, of course, the Sheolite, which is a mineral that's used to make stuff like Wolfram ingrates, but there's a whole lot here you're not seeing. While yes, all of this stuff in the recipes list is craftable, I know Sheolite is one of the materials that our free company is going to need in order to craft our next boat. So. Going forward, these recipes will probably be used. Gen they're obvious recipes, but also in ingredients to craft things like parts for a submersible ship that's going to go on voyages and get a whole lot of unique things. And generally, guilds, big guilds have deep pockets, so these items are generally pretty valuable. And the emery here can be used to make many precious minerals, such as sapphire, topaz, emerald, etc., as well as the fluorite lens, which, as you might have guessed, doesn't have any recipes for it, but is a talon-themed item. So if you want an upgrade for your goldsmith at level 50, then you'll have to craft some fluorite lens in order to prove to talon that you're not a terrible crafter. Next we have Petrified Log, and its main purpose is making ancient lumber, but it can also make a whole lot of other things too, such as petrified orbs. And this is going to mainly be for furniture because ancient lumber goes into a lot of different furniture items. So it's generally a item that you'll use mainly for decorating your house. But this is also used for many of the level 50 masterwork boss themed weapons, as well as some general crafted level 60 masterwork here as well. And we have the cashmere fleece, which is used to make a large woven rug, as well as cashmere cloth, which can be used to make very many recipes, basically a bunch of cloth based gear, not to mention the new world equipment and that very, very cute nano bear is back again. But cashmere fleece can also be used to make camlet which is a talon themed item which will get you a fancy a new a weaver item for your weaver and we have sarin skin here which is used to make patent leather which is the talon themed item so if you want a fancy new cutter for your leather worker that's the item that you'll have to make and we also have sarin leather here which is used to make a whole lot of masterwork level 50 and 60 items now we have the tawny latex which is used to, to make the Terminus Putty, which is used for many different things such as aquariums or armor sets that are level 50 masterwork. Not, not to mention that there's also masterwork furniture as well, but mainly it's going to be mostly for armor that's obviously past its prime, but you might still want for the style. Next we have the Razak Sand, which is used to make Gold Ingot and Enchanted Quicksilver. As you might have guessed, the Enchanted Quicksilver is the Talon themed item, so if you want a Crucible for your Alchemist, that's the way to go. And on the other hand, the Gold Ingot is used to craft many different things. The list is actually quite substantial with basically every crafter having a whole list of things that they can do with gold ingot. This includes stuff like the replica dreadworm stuff, the level 50 extreme boss gear, a bunch of different armors and weapons and tools and furniture items. Gold ingot seems very valuable for the, the abundance of recipes that it has associated with it. Next we have the cooking sherry which is used to make four different culinarian recipes. These three are just regular foods of what you'd expect, they're pretty outdated. The sautéed curiel, which is actually used in order to get the Master Culinarian book one from Talon. So you'll have to make this high quality in order to prove to Talon that you're good enough to get the masterwork recipes so that you can craft more stuff with your culinarian. Next we have peacock ore, and its main purpose is to be turned into rose gold ingot. Rose gold ingot is very valuable. Because not only is it used for submersibles and airships as a free company, it also has a whole lot of really good recipes for it. Stuff like Shrelean flooring, as well as the high house glamour pieces, all require rose gold ingots to be crafted. So this is going to be a very valuable material for those glamour items, as well as from a free company, if you're looking to expand your list of submersibles or airships, then you're probably going to need some rose gold ingots yourself. Next we have the aqueous whetstone, which is used to craft many different things such as a level 50 boss themed weapon and some basic level 50 gear as well. It's also used to craft some furniture items such as monochrome flooring or the emperor's throne. So overall a very decent material to get your hands on if you're looking to craft 
craft that limited pool of items. Next we have Minium, which has a lot of recipes associated with it, mainly the grade one wheels, and those are pretty much just kind of power corrupt out. Now, ethereal wheels are used to create company actions, but obviously we don't need grade one wheels anymore because we can just purchase grade one or even grade two action, company actions with our company points. So this is not really necessary anymore and all of this effort isn't really worth it, but there's still a whole lot of things that the Minium can do, such as make enchanted platinum ink, which is used for many masterwork recipes, as well as completing many of the game's faded orchestration rolls. Occasionally, when you're running through a dungeon, you'll get a faded copy of an orchestration roll, and you'll need an alchemist with a certain kind of ink to be able to complete that orchestration roll and turn it into a usable one. Minium also creates enchanted rose gold ink, which goes into making a whole lot of other masterwork items, as well as completing some orchestration orchestration rolls. Finally, Minium can create crystal glass, which is used for a whole lot of furnishing items. Originally, it was a level 60 crafting material used to make certain things like the Imithrolite Ambic, but nowadays it's mainly used for furniture items and has been included in recipes even up to level 90. So this is definitely a material that is still going to be used for modern recipes. Next we have Potash, which is used for many different recipes, mainly furniture items. It's notable as Potash is required for Vanya Silk, which is used as a high quality ingredient in order to acquire the masterwork recipes for Weaver. And Lime Sulfur, which is used to make High Elixir as well as Growth Formula Delta Concentrate. I've already explained why you might not want to use a High Elixir. Healing with potions is pretty cringe, and it's generally not something that you'll be expected to do. Growth Formula, on the other hand, is used to make many plant-based furnishing items. And finally, the Suspended Trillium Flower, which is a material used to create the Alkalotrops, which is a conjurer weapon. So something that you could get for glamour, it actually pops out into a flower when you unsheath it. So that might be something that you're into. And if you are, this is this is how you get it. You got to get the lime sulfur from the Grand Company. Next, we have the filtered water, which actually makes a bunch of stuff we've talked about before, such as cordial, terminus putty, the triple cream coffee. But new items such as the diluted vitriol, which is used to make many things such as the camlet, which we talked about before as well as the cashmere cloth. A lot of these things are going into recipes that we've already talked about. Next, we have the Void Scent Blood, which is used to make X Ether, as well as Enchanted Platinum Ink, which, as you might imagine, is used to make some various weapons, but, but mainly a big wealth of orchestration rolls, which you have to decipher with the Alchemist class. And then we have Animal Fat, which is used to make two kinds of leather, as well as a bearskin rug. The hard hippogriff leather is used for many different things, including trading to Talon, a high quality version for the Master Leather Worker 1, but also to make some glamour items such as the Best Man and Bridesmaids gear, and not to mention many of these forager items we talked about before that have good stats for gathering at level 50, but can also be used as glamour because they are all class. And it also makes griffin skin knee pads, elbow pads, shin guards, which as you might have guessed is material to make other level 50 armor. Next we have the hardened sap, which makes treated spruce lumber, which is used for free companies to craft their ships to, so that they can go on expeditions. But it also has its own share of a ton of recipes, including a lot of level 50 masterwork gear, but also the round stage, which is really popular for strip clubs in Final Fantasy XIV, especially now that we have the dance pool item from the Golden Saucer. The strip clubs in Final Fantasy XIV cannot get enough of the round stage, so it's definitely an item that you might want to consider crafting if you're looking to make a profit from your carpenter. And next we have the elephant in the room, which is Coke. Now, coke is basically like a coal item that's used to make stark steel ingot, which is a really, really common item in crafting submersibles and housing items. And essentially what had happened is a bunch of guides came out that told everybody just buy a bunch of coke and sell it in the market. And this is why this kind of video is important because knowing 
what these items go into making will have will help you make more informed choices rather than just buying one of one of these many items all of which have some kind of value but essentially there was a bunch of guides that came out that said buy and sell coke because it's super it's super easy to get and basically guilds need thousands of it but what ended up happening was everybody followed this everybody started buying up coke and basically the market completely crashed for it so so coke is still a very valuable item if you're a free company looking to expand your submersible or airship line but overall the gold rush has ended for it and it's not nearly as valuable as it once was Next we have Urushi, which is used to make Petrified Orb. This can be traded into Talon to upgrade your level 50 crafter tool to be a little bit more shiny. And it also makes the Hygen Armor Display, which is a furnishing, a tabletop furnishing item. So the rest of the items after Urushi, with the composite whetstone, the heat resistant plaster, the clear fluorite, the lamp black linseed oil, the camel hair, the black cinnabar, and the duck bones are all used basically exclusively for talon themed upgrades. So if you're not interested in upgrading your level 50 crafter tools with talon, then none of these items are really going to be too interesting to you. And finally, we have the Zephatol Spring Water, which is a very curious item. Zephatol Spring Water is exclusive to captains of a certain grand company and costs 2,500 each. So what crazy recipe will you be making with this very particular bougie brand of spring water? It's going to be the bacon broth. This is going to increase your desynthesis skill gain and reduce your durability loss. Now, the synthesis skill gain is actually a pretty rare thing to get on a food, so it might be worth it if you're doing a whole lot of desynthesis. But overall, it's a really dated recipe that honestly probably isn't worth the company seals. But there you have it. That's pretty much everything that you can get from the Serpent Quartermaster, as well as doing some squadron stuff if you really want to spend your seals that way. The most common way people get seals is through expert delivery. Essentially, whenever you greet an item when you're running through a dungeon, it'll be applicable for expert delivery, and you'll get a certain amount of seals based on what level the item is. And this is generally how people amass a massive amount of seals. And if you're looking to get a whole lot of seals, if maybe you want to run the loot boxes or something, this is generally the best way to go about doing it. You could also do some of the supply and provisioning missions, but generally it's so much easier to just grab a bunch of gear while you're just doing other things and turn it in. Not to mention that if you do a quick exploration with your retainers, they'll usually get gear from that and you'll be able to turn that in for more company seals in which you can buy more ventures to which you can then in turn get more gear from the retainer. But there you have it. That's pretty much everything that you can do with grand company seals. I hope this video was informative or at very least entertaining. Like the video if you liked it, sub to see more like it, and a special thanks to my Patreon supporters who help me make videos like this sponsorship free. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And while you're down there, you should go ahead and check the description for links to my Patreon where you can support the channel, as well as my Discord server where you can come hang out, and my Twitch stream where I play Final Fantasy on Friday with other games on Saturday and Sunday. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.